Okay, so today we're looking at how to solder a copper pipe, how to get two copper pipe um, joints done. Now, there's only really two crucial things in doing this. The first is to make sure you do it um, slowly so that you're not rushing it uh, and make sure you heat gently. And the second is, is to make sure that the pipe is clean. Now, as you can see here, um, this isn't a new piece of pipe. This is a bit old and manky and that we need to clean. See the other end here, not great, but you know. So you clean the pipe, ideally you use wire wool, but you can use scratch bright pads, sandpaper. I mean, <clears throat> at a pinch, uh, you can use one of those um, things you'd use for the washing up. Um, it'll just about do it. I mean, what you're looking for is you're looking for a piece of pipe that comes out a bit like this. Excuse the, the slight mark there, however. But now, being as these are real world demonstrations, um, you're quite often going to find you've got bits of paint on your pipe, things like that. So we'll start off, as I say, by how to clean the pipe. So if you imagine um, this piece here, what we're going to do is put the wire wool around it and we'll give it a good rub. And you need a good distance because you want the, the fitting to have a bit of clean copper behind it so as it's not, you know, the, the, the dirty bit isn't right up against it. So it looks like that. Okay, now if you've got paint on your pipe, <clears throat> the best solution is you've already got a blow lamp close to hand because you're going to be soldering. So, the best solution in my view is to heat the paint so that it comes off nice and easy. So don't burn it, but just heat it so it's nice and soft with your blow lamp. Be careful, it's setting it on fire obviously. And then you can just hit it with your wire wool. Be careful, the pipe will be hot, but you can see there it comes off really easily then because it's softened. See how it's come off there? So if you've got paint on it, just warm it with a blow lamp and take it off like that. Now, <clears throat> one of the things to remember is that usually you'll be working with a piece of pipe where it's in a fixed position like that. So what you've got to watch for is that you can actually get, you, you know, that you don't get um, paint hidden behind here that you can't see. Now, to check to make sure if you have got paint behind there, a good way to do it is with a knife, and what you do is don't have your knife blade straight out, have your knife blade at an angle like that. Turn it over and just scrape the back of the pipe, and you'll be able to tell if there's paint there, like that. So you're scraping the back of the pipe to see if there's any paint there. And you can actually you'll be able to feel, so if you scrape it on the front, you'll be able to feel what it should feel like. And then if there's paint on the back, you'll actually feel it there. So that's a good way. Right, assuming you've cleaned your pipe, and you know, um, well, before you assume you've cleaned your pipe, if you're in desperate straits and you haven't got any wire wool and you're having real trouble cleaning your pipe, um, one thing you can do, which is, I suppose, a bodge, but you know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be a professional looking at this video. Here's a good way that you can sort of just about get around it if the job's not too crucial. Get some flux, put it on the bit of the pipe, warm it. So you won't usually be able to spin your pipe. Warm it. Like so. And then, obviously it's hot, so be careful. Wipe with a cloth. And that usually gets it mostly done. So that's a good way of sort of kind of half getting around it. You're still going to need to get off all the nasty bits that are still there and things like that. Anyway, okay, so we're going to make a joint. <clears throat> You're going to need your solder. You're going to need your flux. There's a couple of different types. Um, you need, um, you know, you, there, there's a couple of types. Don't worry particularly about which one you use. Um, they all have slightly different properties, but you won't notice uh, in a DIY setting the difference. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look initially at jointing two bits of 22 mil pipe together. So. So just clean two ends there. Now, being as you're not doing gas, you need to flux the pipe. So we'll run a little bit of flux round. So, and being as you're not doing gas and you're not too worried, obviously, because you're going to be running water through these, we're not going to worry too much about too much flux. If it's a gas pipe, you would. But so what we'll do is we'll just flux the inside of the fitting there as well. The reason we're not too worried is because we can flush this out when we're done. Um, the water that's put through. So that's there, and then I'm going to take that extra flux off there. We're just going to 
flux the inside of that one there. And the other piece of pipe then. Again, a run of flux around it. And in it goes. Now, one thing to watch for is any of the little bristles falling off the flux brush, because any of those getting stuck in there, you've got a problem. Now then, <clears throat> the easiest way to solder is flat. The hardest way to solder is uh, vertical like that. But I'm going to start this way. I'm going to start horizontal so as you can see. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to solder this one. Sorry. Okay. Right. Now, how much solder to use? They say you need about 22 mil of solder for each 22mm uh, piece of pipe's joint. So basically I need 22mm for this one and 22mm for that one. You know what, <clears throat> don't worry too much about that. What we're going to do is we're going to, because obviously this isn't going to be, um, we're not looking for perfection here. What we're going to do is we're going to run enough in here until we see it start to come out the bottom. And we're going to do the same on this side. Because at the end of the day, if you get a little, um, a little dimple of solder appearing at the bottom, all you need to do is just flick it away. Um, when it's appeared, so you'll know you've got enough solder in there, and all you're doing then is just flicking it away. Now, the crucial thing is the flame size. Doesn't matter what blow lamp you've got. That was too much, and that's too little. So what you want is you want a little gentle flame where you can hear it hiss, but it's not. Just bring it down gently. So what you've got is a controllable gentle controllable flame. Now as we're heating what we don't want to do is to heat the pipe too much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what an overheated piece of pipe looks like. So here's a piece of pipe I'm just going to overheat the end of this. See how it starts to go black and tarnish? That's what you don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat gently. The one thing is, is that the flux should remain, sorry, the flux should remain clear at all times. So we're just going to start gently, and what we're going to do in this case is we're going to heat from the bottom and feed the flux from the top. Because what you don't want to do is to feed the, sorry, feed the uh, solder from the top. What you don't want to do is to heat it down here and insert the the, uh, the, the solder from down here. Because what will happen then is you may just get it in the bottom here and it may not run right round. So we're just going to heat gently. What I'm actually going to do is I'm heating the whole lot at once here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until it gets hot enough to take the solder at the top and let it run down. So up here, you just stroke it gently. You'll know when it's uh, almost ready because you'll see that the solder starts to mark the pipe slightly. There you go, you see it's starting to, there we go, just gently stroking. You see how it's just feeding in, you just want to get it right in the lip between the two. You see how it's come right round, you watch it start to build a, a little ball at the bottom. So I'm just going to, this is more than you need, but this is just so I can show you. It builds a little ball at the bottom there, you can see. And all you do is you just flick that away. And what it's actually done is it's fed into the other side. I'm just going to feed a little bit more in here, like that. And when the ball appears, I'm just going to flick it away. So what we've got there is we've got, we've just run it round and just gently filled from both sides. Now, one thing you don't ever want to do is to now move this joint. If you do, you will hear this crack. Do you hear that? That's what you don't want. That's you breaking the bond between the two. So if that happens, it means you've got to start again. We'll pretend we haven't done that. We'll pretend that that's, um, that's a good joint and we haven't moved it. But if you do, you do hear that creak, that click, you know you've, you've got an issue there. Now, there's a couple of ways of cleaning this joint once you've done that. Now, when it's still quite warm, but not, not uh, you know, so you want to wait 20, 30 seconds, you can just obviously give it a quick rub with a cloth, like so. You get a nice, you get a nice joint coming out there. Now, don't get me wrong. We're doing this for a DIY. 
we're not doing this for perfection. If I was doing this for perfection, I'd have fed in only the right amount of solder to each end. What I'm trying to do is to demonstrate how you can achieve this and can achieve a decent job, you know, without too much practice. You can see here how is it how it's uh, pooled at the bottom. But the great thing about that pool is that you then know it's fed all the way from the top here down and round the bottom. Okay, so that's the joint that way. Some of the tricky things are things like this, which is a T-joint. Now, feeding solder in here is easy. Feeding solder in here is easy. Feeding solder into the bottom of this is not, because it'll always try and run out. So what you're going to do here, with a T-joint looking this way, you're going to heat it from the back here. You're going to fill this one first, sorry, the top one first, then the side one, just gently. By that point, you should be pretty confident that the bottom is warm enough. Now, mostly, the action of, of, of filling the top will let it run down and through, and you'll find that that will actually start to fill the bottom one as well. But what you can do is, um, to, be sh you know, to be sure, you can add a bit more. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what to do when stuff, not goes wrong, but when you have um, excessive solder coming out and you have too much, um, you know, you have solder dripping down the pipe and it looks unsightly. It may seem like a problem to deal with, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, I've just overfluxed the pipe now, so I flux the pipe all the way down there. And I'm just going to show you the bottom of this joint. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm basically going to just... Um, let the solder run down it. Um, I'm going to let the solder run down it and I'm going to show you how to deal with that um, and get rid of it. So, oh, my angle issues. There we go, right. So, you're going to, you're going to be feeding in I'm going to put the other two bits of pipe in. You would obviously never solder with just um, you know, one piece of pipe in. You always have to solder with all of them in the joints at once. For example, here, if I was doing just a straight joint, I would heat the front and I would feed the solder into the back because you always want to feed the solder from the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, as you can see there, it just starts to come round. You can just see, but we can't on the camera there. That there is perfect. You can actually see in the hole there that the solder's come round and you can see at the bottom there how it's just showing a tiny ring all the way around. If I clean that up now, it would be lovely. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep filling. Because what I want it to do is I want it to pour solder down the front or the back of the pipe. The reason I want that is I want to show you how to deal with it. There we go. Lovely. I've got a couple of nice Big solder runs there. See him coming down there? Horrible looking thing that, isn't it? So, what happens if that happens to you? Well, that's really easy to deal with actually. Now, what you do is let your joint cool. So let it let it just um, cool off. And uh, what you do then is you just get, you wait until your, uh, your joint's cooled a bit, and then what you do is you just get the, the, the snot there, you heat it, and you just stroke it away with your wire wool, like that. And you can get rid of those snots quickly and easily like that. There you go. Heat it where it's bulged, and then just knock it away. Heat it, and knock it away. So it's a very quick and easy way if you have, um, if you have had problems, and you have had solder dribble down. Because at the end of the day, this isn't a guide for professionals. This is a guide for people who need to do a little bit or need to do some soldering or a learning to solder it's not for um it's not and it's especially not for gas engineers i hope so there we are i hope that helps it's pretty basic but you get the idea um go slow make sure your pipe is clean and you shouldn't have any problems there we are hope that helps